Hey ladies, happy Wednesday. We're halfway through the week. I hope you're having a great one. Um, today we are going to talk about three ways to get more protein. So I'm going to hang tight here a second, see if anybody's going to join us live. I got some fresh new blonde in my hair today. Thank you, Brittany, if you're watching. <laughs> All right, just a couple seconds here and we are going to get rolling. Lots to talk about protein today. Lots of people wanting to talk about protein today. So, all right, it's been about 30 seconds, so here we go. Um, so, protein is easily the number one um, question that I get from women in particular who are trying to improve their eating habits. So that is exactly why we're gonna talk about protein today. Um, honestly, most women just plain simply don't eat enough protein. Traditionally, as a society, we have this, um, I don't call it a belief, but we have this um, view that like men eat wheat, eat wheat, oh my goodness, what am I saying? Men eat meat and women eat salads. So, this way of thinking like and truly if you go to a restaurant if you go to a restaurant with a man whether you know friend spouse whatever it's just a man and a woman go to a restaurant and the woman orders a steak but the man orders a chicken salad you can bet that when the meal comes out what's going to happen they're going to flip flop them they're going to give the salad to the woman because they just assume oh the woman must eat the salad um that has happened to myself and my husband a lot and i've actually read stories on uh, instagram about that happening to other people too that's just sort of um, a traditional societal view that we kind of have, however wrong that might be. So, but this way of thinking has caused women to super drastically under eat on their protein, just as a general rule across the board. And then when we realize, oh, I really need to be eating more protein, we really struggle with how to get it because all throughout our lives, it's just not something that we've eaten a lot of. And we probably don't have a lot of female role models older than us in our lives who have um who were high protein eaters if you think back to what um, moms and grandmas ate as we were growing up it was probably not a whole lot of protein um so that has created put got us into this situation has created this problem so um most women absolutely need well over 100 grams of protein i chose 100 grams for this example simply because it's an easy number to think about but the majority of women need far more than that. Um, and so they, I've talked about this in other lives before, so I'll just really briefly say it. Um, the amount of protein that you need, you wanna take your weight in pounds and multiply it by like 0.7 or 0.8. That is the very low end of how much protein you want to eat in a day. If you are considerably overweight, you don't wanna take your weight in pounds, you wanna take your ideal body weight. And so me, ideal body weight meaning like look up what is your ideal body weight for your height um, and being a woman, not the ideal body weight you wish that you were. Those are two different things. Um, so it's 0.7 or 0.8 and that's the very low end of how much protein you wanna eat. Um, as a simple, easy general rule, we can think one gram of protein per one pound of body fat. So, or not body fat, body weight. So if you weigh 150 pounds, you're looking at 150 grams of protein or maybe just slightly under that. Um, if you are over age 50, you actually are gonna want more than one gram of protein per pound because we are much more likely to begin losing uh, muscle mass as we age um, due to menopause. So um, these are all things to consider, but I'm gonna use 100 grams of protein just as an easy number for, for us to sort of keep in our head. Um, but like I said, most women need far more than 100 grams of protein. Um, but even if we take that 100 grams of protein, most women in reality are actually consuming around 50 grams of protein per day. Now think about that for a minute. What did we just say about the 150 pound woman? We wanna say about 150 grams of protein most women are only eating about 50. That's one third of the actual amount of protein that she should be eating for optimal health. Now there is a number that is much lower that the, um, our government, the RDA uses, um, and it's a much, much lower number, but that is literally, that number is literally just for survival. That is not for optimal health. So for optimal health, we're looking at much, much closer to one gram per one pound or about 0.8 of your body weight 
what am I trying to say? <laughs> Point, take your body weight, multiply it by 0.8. Sorry, I'm like in my own head, like, am I even saying this right? I don't know. Um, anyway, so, um, so most women are really only eating about 50 grams of protein, way, 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 way too low. So I want to give you a couple of examples of so how much protein is in certain foods. If you take a quarter pound of lean ground beef, that has only about 22 grams of protein in it, an entire quarter pound. Um, a cup of milk has about eight grams of protein in it. So regular standard 2% milk has about eight grams of protein in it. Um, peanut butter, which is one of those things that people say, oh, eat some peanut butter for your protein. Please don't eat peanut butter for your protein. I'm going to talk more about that by the end of this video. So stay tuned to the end of this because I'm going to talk about that. That's something I hear all the time. Love peanut butter. No hating on peanut butter. Peanut butter is life. Please don't eat it for your protein source. Um, a serving of peanut butter only has seven grams of protein in it. Now remember, you want to be well over a hundred. So it's only got seven grams. So you can see how we need to be really purposeful about the amount of, uh, not the amount of protein, but um, where our protein is coming from in order to be able to um, make sure that we're hitting our protein goals. So that's what we're going to talk about today is how to be purposeful about this. What are some things that you should be incorporating to make it easier for you to meet your goals? So um, the first and most obvious uh, protein source is going to be meat, of course, chicken, beef, pork, all, all that kind of stuff. Um, other animal products like eggs, um, dairy products, um, particularly cottage cheese, yogurt, things like that, Fairlife brand milk, um, which is also lactose free, um, are going to be good sources of protein. But we can also have good sources of protein that are not meat products, such as uh, beans, lentils, um, vegetables like green peas is a good one. Um, quinoa and soy are all good sources of protein. There's of course others, but um, just kind of briefly covering some. So with that said, with those things in mind, my first suggestion on how to get more protein is first identify what am I already eating, just typical in my normal day to day. What is something that I'm already eating that's a typical protein source and then just eat more of it. You don't have to get really creative with all these fancy recipes that you see online or, or um, protein powders and things like that. If you're normally eating about two ounces of chicken with your dinner, just eat more. Eat three ounces, eat four ounces of chicken with your dinner. Um, if you're normally eating three ounces of tofu, maybe eat four ounces of tofu, right? So you identify what protein am I already eating and just put more of it on your plate. Simple, right? You don't have to make anything new, nothing special, um, nothing extra. It's more, it's what you're already doing. We kind of talked about this last week in uh, the meal prep one when we said, you know, you don't have to get really fancy with your meal prep. Just take whatever dinner you're already making and make more of it. It's the same concept. Find, identify the protein you're eating now, eat more of that one thing. So you don't have to make anything special. Um, and really, y'all, if we're being really honest here, you've probably seen my posts in the group lately. In fact, I just posted a screenshot of a text message that I got from someone this past weekend. Um, most women are simply not eating enough food in general. So our calories are way, 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 way low compared to where they should be for optimal health. So when we are eating more food, it is easier to get in more protein. So don't be so afraid. Don't worry about eating tiny little bird servings of things, y'all. Eat the food. Um, and we also, I should sort of caveat here, don't, we don't want you just eating more food. Don't go and eat up a bucket of chicken wings and fries and say, well, Kristen said to eat more food. We need to be eating more of the right food, not just the more of any food. Um, so when we are eating more of the right food, and by right food, I'm talking about lean proteins, vegetables, whole grains, fruits. When we're eating more of those types of things, it is much, much easier to get our protein in. Um, okay, number two, you can make some simple swaps. So again, look at what you're already currently eating and what are some things that you can flip-flop. So for example, rice is a big one. A lot of people love rice. I love rice, not hating on rice, but you can take rice that is a very minimal protein source and you can swap that for quinoa or buckwheat, things like that instead that's gonna have a little more protein in it. Um, if you eat salads with croutons, instead of croutons, you can swap that for like roasted chickpeas. You can swap that for, they sell those, um, uh, they're like dried um, cheese, cheese crisps, I think they're called. They're like little bags. 
and um, you can put use those. I'm gluten free. I can't eat gluten, so I can't do croutons anyway, sadly. Um, but I use those cheese crips. I can't talk today, y'all. Something about changing our time of this live has made me just not be able to talk. Cheese crisps. Um, and I put those on my salad in place of croutons and they are, it's especially if you get the Parmesan ones, they are fairly low fat. There's no carbs. And then it's a few grams of protein in place of croutons, which would be no protein at all. Um, if you like Parmesan cheese on like on top of your pasta or in your salads and things, you can try nutritional yeast instead. So, and I actually have some, we use this here at our house. So here is, it's just little flakes. And um, you get you just sprinkle sprinkle it on, or you can open the other end like a, um, a seasoning and take out a tablespoon. Two tablespoons of nutritional yeast contain nine grams of protein, versus two tablespoons of Parmesan cheese only have about four grams of protein. So these are this is a um, uh, vegan source. So again, if you're um, uh, concerned about animal products, this is not animal product, whereas obviously cheese is. Um, but you can use these um, in place of it. It tastes a lot like Parmesan cheese, and I just ordered this off of Amazon. Um, so, um, so that's another swap that you can make. Instead of Parmesan cheese, you'll get five more grams of protein in two tablespoons using this versus Parmesan cheese. Um, and then my final suggestion for today is to snack on your protein. Uh, yeah, snack on your protein. I don't know what's wrong with my brain today. Um, it is super difficult to meet your protein goals if you're only trying to get all of your protein into your breakfast, lunch, dinner. You've got to have it in your snacks somewhere along the way or else it's going to be really hard to get up to that number where you want to be. So a re really simple kind of maybe obvious snacks that you can pull that are going to have some good amount of protein are things like low fat string cheese is one. My personal favorite brand is the Sargento brand of low fat string cheese. It has like six grams of protein, um, maybe one or two carbs and one or two fat. Um, and so I'll have a couple of those throughout the day. That's 12 grams. Two of those is 12 grams of protein right there. Um, uh, you can do um, non-fat Greek yogurt. Um, and check the label on your Greek yogurts because they're going to have varying amounts of protein, carb, and fat in them. You want ones that have minimal fat, especially. May have some carb if it's, uh, especially if it's flavored, um, like if it's fruit flavor. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Y'all, carbs aren't the enemy. It's fine, but just know what you're eating. Um, and but they are definitely going to have varying amounts of Greek yogurt. I mean. Uh, Maybe I should just turn this off and start over. Varying amounts of protein um, in them. So I have seen some Greek yogurts with only about eight grams of protein on up to the one that we use is that um, Oikos, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but Oikos brand, O-I-K-O-S, the triple zero, that has 15 grams of protein in one of the cups. So, um, so pay attention, read your labels when you buy them. But non-fat Greek yogurt's a great one. Um, beef jerky, turkey jerky, that kind of stuff is also good. There's also some vegan jerkies out there. Um, lunch meat, just roll up lunch meat. Um, in our family, um, uh, roll ups are really, uh, our family's a big fan of those. Like rolling up a slice of deli turkey or rolling up a slice of ham and just munching on it. We also like sometimes to roll up some, some uh, thin sliced provolone cheese in there and nibble on that for snacks or even just for lunch. Um, slices of turkey pepperoni. This is another one. Who knew? I knew. Did you know? That uh, turkey pepperoni, 17 slices of turkey pepperoni is a serving and it's quite low calorie and fairly high protein. Now that is if you can handle processed meats. Not everybody can. Um, but what I like to do is um, the Hormel brand in particular, it's gluten free. So I eat that one and I'll take it and I will um, cut it in fours, like cut it like crisscross the pepperoni. I'll just put a whole stack of it. And I actually only do half a serving at a time because 17 is quite a bit. Um, and I cut it in the quarters in little pieces and it's nibble. So if you're kind of like me where I have this hand to mouth habit, where I just want to be snacking on things, even though I know I probably don't really, I'm not actually hungry. I don't really need to be eating right now. It's just this habit. And it's more of a habit for me than it is a craving. So one of the ways to handle that habit slash craving is to have small things that you can munch on that aren't going to really derail your goals. So if I cut up the pepperonis into those quarters and 17 of those into quarters, do the math on that. 17 times 4, 40, 58, um, 68, maybe 68, I think, um, can, uh, 
that's a lot. And so that's a lot of snacking. It takes a long time to eat it. You're getting in your protein and you're not eating other stuff that maybe you feel like you shouldn't be eating for your goals. So um, turkey pepperoni is a great one. Hard boiled eggs, um, cottage cheese, like small cups of cottage cheese, maybe with a little bit of fruit on top, um, tuna, tuna packets. Okay. Um, so here, here's the pepper I'd promised you in the beginning. I was going to talk about peanut butter before I was done. Um, you can also get some, and I put some in little quotation marks, protein from snacks such as apples dipped in peanut butter or, um, peanut butter and celery. Or you ever see like those ants on the log snacks for kids, like with the peanut butter and the celery and then the little raisins on it. Um, so you can certainly get some protein in that. However, I want to make sure we are all very clear that protein is not, ah, la, 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 peanut butter is not a protein source. Peanut butter is a fat source. So yes, there is some protein in it, but that should not be your source of protein. So what I mean by this is one serving of peanut butter has seven grams of protein. I mentioned that a little bit earlier up above, but it also has 16 grams of fat in it. So remember that one gram of protein equals four calories and one gram of fat equals nine calories. I don't have enough fingers, nine calories for one gram of fat. And so when you do the math, 28 calories come from protein versus 144 calories are coming from fat. That's what makes peanut butter a source of fat versus a source of peanut butter. So yes, there is some protein in peanut butter. Yes, peanut butter is life. Yes, peanut butter is delicious and amazing. And yes, you should eat peanut butter. No, you should not eat peanut butter as your protein source. <laughs> um, so I don't ever want to tell someone not to eat peanut butter. I feel like y'all will run me out and leave the group and never talk to me again because it's, I love peanut butter too. I am allergic to chocolate, if I've never said that before in here. And peanut butter is my chocolate. So there's my, my soapbox for today. So to wrap it up, you need to be, make a conscious effort to meet those protein goals. There's got to be strategies and things that you're doing. Eat more of what you've already are already eating a bigger serving of what you're already eating. Make sure you snack on it, make some swaps like we suggested earlier. Um, for most people, you're not going to hit your protein goals just naturally. It's something that you'll need to work at. Once you work at it and are um, more aware of what choices you can make to get your protein in, it absolutely becomes natural and second nature, but it is not something that is going to just happen completely on its own. Um, so the effort, however, is well worth the benefits. So protein benefits, you're going to feel fuller longer because protein takes longer to digest than other foods. Um, protein will increase your metabolism, partly because it takes longer to digest. Our body is working harder when we eat it to digest it, therefore burning more calories. So it'll help speed your metabolism, your resting metabolism. Um, protein will help increase bone strength. Protein helps improve our immune system, even all the way down to a cellular level. Our bodies need protein to repair and make new cells for every part of our body, including our skin, including our hair, our muscle, everything. To a cellular level, we need more protein. So don't be afraid of eating more protein. Um, if you have any questions, comments, um, concerns, um, ideas for other ways to get protein, or maybe some of your favorite protein sources, anything like that, please put it in the comments. When you comment on posts in the group, it helps those, those uh, posts pop up for more people onto their feed, and I would be super duper appreciative of that. And I am always happy to answer any questions that you might have. Um, or anything like that. So please feel free to leave some comments down below. And if you have any ideas for any future lives, I'm always open to hearing that as well. And I hope you all have a great rest of the week and I will see you next week.